What's up guys? I'm Crystal Lee Naomi, aka Jasmine Borders on Tyler Perry's Sisters. Be sure to subscribe to the Haves and the Have Nots review for not only reviews on the Haves and the Have Nots, but also on Sisters. And while you're at it, give your girl a follow on Instagram at Crystal Lee Naomi. And I'll see you every Wednesday at night, only on BET. All right, Sisters fans. Uh I'm not going to lie. You know, aside from being busy, I've been doing a lot of cleaning, thank goodness, and uh, shopping, eBay stuff, and I'm catching up on all my videos. So I'm recording a lot of videos tonight, and I will edit and whatnot Saturday, so you'll get a crap ton of videos. Sisters, Roofless, Assisted Living, um, what's the other show? Wait. Assisted Living, Sisters. Oh yeah, that's right, because I did review the other, oh, yeah, I've already taken care of House of Pain and Happen to have nots. I got a couple more from both shows coming out, but basically you're going to get the rest of the show. Sisters, Ruthless. I got a couple of old ones too, so a lot of content. I wasn't in a huge rush to watch this episode because, to be quite honest, I didn't hear any. I didn't hear much of any good things about it. I didn't hear the same kind of hype I heard from last week's episode or the week prior to that. This episode, it. Why were all the men assholes? Zach, well, for most of the men. I think that Calvin and Preston were like the only two uh, males, excuse me, not females, males in the show or this episode who weren't written to be insufferable. So l let me just do the basics, you know, the drill. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Click the bell notification icon. That way you are up to date whenever I post content to the channel. Uh, don't mind me. I'm trying to pull up the uh, sister synopsis and whatnot. I accidentally clicked the wrong button when I was talking. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Hit the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out when I post content to the channel. And follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. First of all, holy crap. This episode got over a million. Yeah. A million live viewers. Congrats, sisters. It hasn't received a million since uh, the series premiere. So, I mean, season premiere. So, congrats when I get home. Andy is uncomfortable with Gary's latest actions. Sabrina gives Maurice some advice to assist with his new troubles. And, uh... Wait, what? Sabrina gives Maurice some advice to assist with his new troubles? I don't really see where the advice came in. And Zach is confused by a co-worker's advantage, advances. So this was season two, episode nine. This is probably my least favorite episode of the season because it just left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, I don't know what to score this episode yet. I actually have a blank over 10. I honestly don't know. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about the episode first and then I'll get my score at the end. I hope you all are okay with that. So basically, Gary is trying to force Andy into his car or her. Car, I think it's his car. Basically, he's trying to force her into a vehicle because he's basically hung up on the fact that he knows that she was out with another guy. Remember, it's Paris that the lawyer saw Andy with at the gay bar. And basically, what I'm out of jail, no kiss, no hug is like, look, I ain't trying to hug you or kiss you when you're acting like that. I want to need you to calm down. Basically, Gary is being borderline abusive, and I was thinking to myself, Lord, please don't let Andy be flung over this parking garage like Jasmine was. Andy, I will admit, was remaining cool. I, I like the fact that she was remaining calm in this situation, but from him taking her car keys and everything, and then when Hayden popped up and basically was like, is everything okay? And then Andy's like, no, we're fine. I'm thinking about Andy, red alert. Get the hell out of there. Basically, um... She gets her keys back from Gary, gets into the car and leaves. Hayden actually backs his car up to prevent Gary from leaving and following her. And I was like, all right, Hayden, that's all right. So then from there, Andy calls Karen as she's going back to her place. And she's telling Karen about how Gary, Gary's flipping off on her in the parking garage. And Karen's like, wait, are you being followed? I was like, no, I'm not. And then Karen's like, okay, girl, I'll meet you at your house. 
So basically, you know, there's a girl in the salon chair and then thankfully one of her workers is able to, able to take over. See, Karen has the most believable excuses for when she leaves work because she has other employees. So if she has to leave for whatever reason, another one of her employees can come in and finish the hair from a client. So I actually like that aspect of her character. I don't know why, but Karen was looking, maybe it wasn't her hair, but she was looking really good this episode. So then we go over to Sabrina and Danny. I think Danny is going, yes, yeah, Danny's driving home from work. Uh, her and Sabrina are talking on the phone, basically kind of recapping um, last night's one night stands to an extent. You know, Danny with uh, James and the fact that she gave her toothbrush that he used to the landlord and basically told her off about letting Preston in because, oh, no, he's a good country boy. And I let him in. It's like, well, hey, that's against the law. You know, you better not let him in my apartment anymore. And basically, um, Sabrina talks about how Calvin wants to commit and Danny's like, well, you don't even know him like that. Yeah, I know. And then um, they're talking about the whole crystal meth thing. So Sabrina calls Maurice and asked him to see about giving Calvin a drug test because if they're trying to move in together, he can use that as a cover up excuse. And he says he'll do it. This did not make me like Sabrina at all. This is just her going back to her season one level ridiculousness of not confronting the issue up front. It's like she's all about more um, telling Calvin about being honest with each other, yet she isn't being honest. She's doing everything except for just asking Calvin up front, hey, do you do drugs? Or in this case, crystal meth. I'm sorry. I know this is unlike me, but I actually have a mint in my mouth because my throat was getting a little dry since I was talking so much doing videos. So hopefully my um, dialogue doesn't sound weird or you can hear a mint clicking in my mouth i mean honestly i feel like i can hear it because it's my mouth my ears but whatever so um then we go over to zach and fatima um you know fatima's going home about to change because remember she had left the uh, house that zach's working on and basically they'll meet up later tonight after he's done at the house you know simple as that uh karen and andy are talking over at her place and this is like andy come on now part of me doesn't want to be too hard on andy because i'm a viewer and we can see things that they can't but there are real women like Andy because of the fact that it's clearly an abusive relationship. Not yet, but it's going to get there if things keep up the way they are now. Because Karen is trying. I know some people might be like, Karen is one to talk. But Karen is looking out for a girl. Like even at the episode where Andy goes to have the one night stand with Paris. Karen's like, girl, don't you think you're moving a bit too fast? And I remember Karen getting a lot of flack. And I'm like. Say what you want to, but Karen just noted that Andy was upset and she's drunk and she didn't want her friend to make a mistake because she was caught up in the moment. So, yeah, there are times where a friend can be hypocritical, but they can call, be rightfully calling you out on your bullshit. So she literally, t I do like what Andy said about her not being as strong as Karen's. Like, look, the way you like, goodbye, Zach, and everything, I can't do that. That's real. So I felt for Andy... But the fact that you're trying, I honestly don't have anything to add to this scene because Karen pretty much did an excellent job speaking for the audience. You're just making excuses for him again. It's like Andy's under the mind, just based off how Andy was talking. Look, I want to give him the money back and then he'll be gone. That's literally Andy saying, hey, I'm going to give him the money back. But if he's not an asshole about it, then I think I'm still going to mess around with him because... I still love him. And then Zach, um, Karen's like, I still love Zach, but I we both need to move on. So it's almost like these two are kind of recapping the events of season one because both of them were like, yeah, let's fool around with these men, but let's be careful. But now it's like, okay, shit's getting ugly. We need to move on. So Karen is literally speaking from the audience. And like I said, I honestly, this was a great scene. It was frustrating to watch Andy say and do what she said because Karen, uh, she's like, look, girl, I just need a minute. And I was planning my whole life out with him and everything. And then Karen rightfully is like, well, remember, you two were together for six months. He didn't even leave his wife. So, look, I'll give you a minute. But as soon as he steps out of line, one more time, that minute is over. So Karen got her girls back. Remember what she did to Bean now? She can handle herself. She learned that from Miss Lisa. So, uh, because Karen's trying not to be delusional like Andy, who's like, look, I just want to have a good time with my girls tonight. It's like, this man is stalking you. You. You got a bit of a problem, Andy. So, um, Fatima and Hayden talk. Hayden comes over to pretty much tell Fatima about how well do you know Andy, that dude, Gary. I get a bad vibe. He showed up at a parking garage. And look, uh, she said she'd find out anything she could about the situation because Hayden was actually trying to look out for Andy. 
And basically, it turns out him and Fatima had a one night stand. He got caught up. Apparently, he thinks Fatima is the one. Fatima's like, no, I don't feel that same way. It's like, um, Hayden, I like, I mean, again, asshole. A lot of women your age are trying to get married. Why aren't you? Look, I'm independent. I ain't got time for that. No, I'm good. So then he literally gets kicked out because kind of like Gary, in a way, is weird because Hayden comes over there to warn Fatima about how Gary ran up on Andy. But now it's like he's kind of running up on Fatima the same way. There must have been an asshole. There must have been like a, I don't want to use the word pandemic, but there must have been an asshole mosquito flying around the cast this show because like the asshole Patan got passed from Gary to Hayden. All right, so then we go over to Preston who's waiting outside of uh, Danny's door because the landlord wouldn't let him in and uh, she lets him come in and a lot of people are saying exactly what I feel about this scene. Danny just stopped playing games and uh, basically Preston talked with his sister about why to understand why saying gal to a black woman is offensive and that made me think wait is Preston's sister white right look there are some episodes in season one I did not watch because my videos were not doing well so I know he says he's from a racist family so I'm wondering if like if his sister is racist and Preston asked about telling a black girl calling black girl gal would the sister become suspicious that her her brother's dating a black woman I was just wondering so let me know in the comments if this was already addressed in season one but I missed it but Preston, as he said, I'm trying to learn, but you're not being honest. You're cracking jokes. You're just like saying what you're not saying what you're feeling. You're just saying something to be mean or smart. And Danny was really getting on my nerves here. I'm like, look, Preston is trying to learn. It's like if it's like, well, you should know. And it's like, well, I don't I've never really been in the situation where I've been dating a black woman before. So you got to understand. So it's like. That's what made the scene frustrating because Preston is honestly trying to learn, but Danny isn't being understanding. It's like you'll fly off at the drop of a hat without realizing that, you know what? Yeah, I might I played a role in what happened. Like, yeah, I was upset. You were in the wrong for calling me gal, but I didn't fully explain. Basically, Danny expected Preston to know everything there is about dating a black woman when obviously that isn't the case. And when he rightfully called her out about the James, no, well, not called her out, but let's talk about the James thing. Oh, she wanted to sit down for that one. I'm like, yep. So in any case, um, she wanted to be with him. You know, James doesn't make Pre uh, Danny feel the way Preston does. You know, she wanted to be held and things like that. And she was lonely and vulnerable. So uh, they try to have a quickie. And I do like the fact that it's like, he licked my butt. Wait, well, look, I'll look you anywhere else, but I ain't licking your butt. It's like, well, I don't want you to. So they go, you know, do a little something, something. And he offers like, hey, you want to go out? Then I'll stay here, make dessert for you. Okay. So Danny in the end, I, I kind of like these scenes, but only if they stick. Like, I don't want to have a good scene like this because Preston was saying from season one, Danny, you told me to. You know, I said I will be honest and whatnot and, you know, be straightforward and ask questions. But you need to tell me what you're feeling. It's like Danny just expects Preston to read her mind. That's pretty much it. So I don't want this to be like two episodes later and Danny's acting how she was a couple episodes ago. Because if it does, then it makes this scene lose merit. But I did like this scene for what it was. All right. So Aaron comes by Karen's place to meet up because they were supposed to go to the grocery store before she goes to girls night. But, you know, telling that basically seeing that she's rushing to get things done, you know, dressing up. And again, she looked hella good in that red dress, dressing up to go to the supermarket with him, then meet up with the girls. He's like, look, you know what? We can reschedule it. I wanted to go back where we met, but you know, have fun with your girls. And she invites him to stay or excuse me, invites him to be there when she gets back. Kind of like Preston and Danny. So he's like, okay, let me go get a bag of stuff. I only need a few groceries. Let me go get a bag or whatever. I think he meant like his bag to come stay the night or whatever. But essentially, he was going to be there at Karen's place when she got home. Something interesting, though, which goes back to the whole pastor thing. Apparently, he doesn't know the first lady who came into the uh, salon. Given that she's the first lady of a pretty well-known and well-established church in the community, you would think a pastor would know who the first lady is. So now I'm kind of side-eyeing Aaron like the rest of y'all. But in any case, 
Um, you know, he kind of joked around about being a sign. He's like, oh, well, God's trying to tell you something. Maybe we should get married. Again, it was just a joke. Kind of like in the trailer where, you know, Aaron's talking about getting married. And then um, uh, Karen's like, and you being followed. It was just for suspense. That's all it was. But in any case, um, let's see. He offers like, hey, do you need some money? He's like, oh, no, no, I'm good. Because, you know, he was like trying to offer. Was like, I mean, not offer. was like, hey, do you need any money when you go out? So I was like, okay, Aaron, I see you. So then we get to, I want to save the more recent Calvin thing for last, if y'all don't mind. So uh, we got Fatima and Zach. So Zach, I know a lot of people are in the Facebook group like, why the hell is Zach acting the way he is? So Zach shows up to Fatima's place with his uh, shirt unbuttoned, chest exposed and whatnot. I don't, I don't know if he was like, but it seems to me that as Fatima said, you know, you're acting a bit weird, like he, getting some bad vibes. So Maybe it's the other dudes at the uh, the Chain Breakers program that probably gave him some insight into Fatima and how she is. But essentially, he was being insecure and an asshole. So it looks like the asshole baton was uh, handed over from Hayden over to Zach. This scene felt completely out of place. Like if we would have seen, look, I know Zach said that uh, to the on the phone with Fatima earlier that the guys probably got the vibe that Fatima and Zach kind of had a thing going on. So there was probably a, um, something that happened off screen where the guys were telling Zach this kind of thing. It would have helped the episode if we would have seen that. I'm not saying that would have made me like Zach's behavior e any better when it came to the scene. But it would have added more context because the way things were looking, it's like the other guys were kind of teasing Zach about how he, you know, Fatima and Hayden kind of were a thing or whatnot. And Zach probably um, unbuttoned his shirt and yelled in the rain like it was a 90s or early 2000s R&B video. But in any case, he comes up in there, shirt unbuttoned, getting on Fatima's case and like asking questions like, hey, do you hook up with other guys like this? Basically, and Fatima lays it down like, look, I know what I want. And don't let those guys spreading rumors ruin a good thing. And he, he's basically acting like a baby. And I'm like, this is the shit that I hate. And I hate the curse. But anytime, that's why I love to hate Zach. It's like I was really rooting for him this season. But they keep doing this shit with his character. They just make him regress. And I hate that. Because now we got Gary, Hayden, and Zach being insecure. And... You know what? I, I can't even talk about this anymore. All right. So. All right. So Maurice is on the phone. Uh, well, excuse me. Maurice is still at work trying to get these uh, reports ready uh, so he can clock out. Calvin is calling him about the whole uh, roommate deal. And um, essentially, it's like, hey, we'll talk about this in person. Bring me a bite to eat because this could take a few hours. So Calvin shows up at the bank with some food, extra mayo. And I think we all get the end of window there. I've seen a lot of people in the Facebook group and on the uh, Facebook page for sisters because they posted the photo of, you know, Maurice with his back turned and Calvin taking a piss. The comment sections were not kind and I can see why. There's a lot of unnecessary in the windows and, well, I don't want to offend anybody, but gay dialogue. We get Maurice's gay. He was my, he was my favorite character in season one because Maurice just added a different energy on the show not because he was gay but just his his uh the way he acted the way he well not acted being gay but i mean like the way he acted in regards to his dialogue delivery his quick his uh um witty comebacks i he was one of he was like my favorite character i love his dynamic with sabrina but to make the flamboyancy to make calvin piss in the lobby of a bank Why? Like Calvin said, cameras. I think Maurice said a reason like, oh, no, it won't pick up anything unless such as I forgot what Maurice said, but I was just so disgusted with this scene. It was completely unnecessary. I honestly have nothing to say aside from this was an uncalled for scene. Calvin could have went to the restroom, pissed in the cup and then came on back. There was no reason for it to go down the way it did. So gives him the pee cup, well, actually puts it on the counter, and then Calvin leaves. And then, you know, that's when Maurice tries to grill him about, you know, are you doing drugs, crystal meth? Uh, 
cocaine anything no i've had childhood asthma since i was a kid so well i've had asthma since i was 12 so i don't do drugs or anything like that so also another thing i had a problem with but then again this is a family thing the reason that calvin needs a room asap is because his remaining father is moving down to florida most likely to retire which reminds me is like what's the thing about tyler perry shows all of them take place in georgia and whenever characters decide to retire they go down to florida mama rose who said that, you know, other Malones retired down there as well. In the Dream uh, spinoff series, The Pains, Curtis and Ella went to Florida, and now you got, you know, Calvin's dad going down to Florida. So in any case, um, he's giving all of his savings to his father to leave, and I'm like, as a child, yeah, you want to look out for your parents, and I feel like maybe his father didn't want to take all the money, but Calvin insisted, but... You know, it's like the parable of the speck in your eyes. Like you could get the speck out of your brother's eye, but you want to make sure you got the speck out of your own eye first. Basically, don't give everyone to close off your back unless you have some resources for yourself. I mean, but then again, you could pray for provisions from God. But at the same time, it just doesn't make a lot of sense from a financial standpoint. It's like, hey, dad, take all my money. Now I don't have a place to live. And if Maurice says no, I'm screwed. So, yeah, there's that. But the piss in the cup thing was the breaking point for me. So then we get to the end of the episode. Maurice is finally done at work and Alonzo's waiting for him in the parking lot. So that was the episode. What would I score it? Yeah, like I said, a bunch of characters, kind of like the title from last week's episode of House of Pain, were acting out of character or just overly at... Look, I'm not the biggest Gary fan, but to make him this stalkerish... Though, look, I think Tyler Perry's doing with Gary what they were, what he did with Warlock and Quincy before they got killed off on the haves and the have nots. Now, I'm not saying Gary's going to die. I honestly don't know, but they're just making him a rapid bulldog right now, and it makes zero sense for him to be acting the way he is. Now, I felt a little bad for him, you know, with the whole Jasmine situation last season in regards to you know his mother's urn and the gas tank of the car and setting it on fire and wailing on him with the bat. And it was self-defense, not saying that he meant to throw off the balcony of the uh, parking garage, but there's not a single redeeming quality of Gary where even if it turns out none of the crimes he was arrested for stick because he's innocent, there's no redeeming quality about him that I like or any quality that makes me feel like, Oh, if he's innocent, I want him and Gary, um, Andy together. no, I don't like him. I just feel like I feel like his character is just to be, you know, diary of a mad black woman journal of a mad black man. That's honestly what it is like. You have the right to yell, take somebody's keys, be abusive. And hell, I think Karen even uh, told Andy about how his wife told you about how he can get like I ain't trusted her. And it's like the proof is in the pudding. So you got Andy being blinded, just just embarrassingly so. Zach being an asshole, immature baby man child. Hayden is kind of new, so I'm not really going to fault him for acting the way he is. I mean, in next week's episode, I'm not going to like what he does to Zach. Um, Danny, at least Preston put her in her place, though. Sabrina just being immature. I'm I'm going to score this episode. Dang. It did have some good scenes, though. But the whole more recent Calvin thing... It pains me to do this. I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of 10. I don't recommend it. I hate to do this. 4 out of 10. Let me know if this score is a bit too low. Let me say again. I loved how Preston put Danny in his, in her place. I did like how Karen was trying to put some sense into Andy. Um, I did like the Karen and Aaron scene. That was a good scene too. Hayden standing up for Andy. That was good too. Yeah. Four out of 10. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Apparently we are almost at the mid season finale. Oh boy. And with that being said, make sure you like the video and subscribe. Shout out to the patrons over on Patreon. You can join in for as little as $1 a month, or you can just donate to the channel via PayPal or cash app. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you soon.